back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol and it's fucked up Friday again. I tell you what, the amount of people who send me messages saying, I've got a fucked up Friday story for you, man. I'll send it through this afternoon or wait for it. It's killer. And then never to be heard from again. If you're going to message me to tell me you've got a crazy fucked up Friday story, just send it in the message. Just go, here's a fucked up Friday story. Take an extra 10 minutes and just type it out. Even if you type it out retarded, which most of you will. I know you're degenerates and you don't know how to spell. And you know nothing about grammar. Neither do I, but I'll fix it up this end. I had a gig last night and I had a cameraman in there to film me so I can start posting some stand-up footage. And I got the footage today and I'm afraid it's unusable. I look like a fat fuck. I was going to post some clips and I was going to use it to send to bookers because I had a good set. But fuck that, I'd rather burn that fucking tape. Not only do I look fat, I'm wearing like a red shirt and my face is red as well. So it looks like I had trouble getting up the stairs. Oh, it's gross. I need to lose weight. Seriously. Remember how I said that shit, I want to be in the 80s by March 8th? Well, that was all going real smooth up until last weekend. Now, I got down to 95, and now I would say I'm back up to almost 100. And just before I started recording this podcast, I had a whole block of chocolate, and now my heart's palpitating, and my left foot is starting to hurt. So, I don't know what that means, but it can't be anything good, can it? Anyway, enough about that. I have a fucked up Friday story today. It got sent in from a man. I don't know if he wants his name read out, so I'll keep it anonymous. He's a nurse, so that's embarrassing enough. And I love how male nurses, whenever they tell you what they do, they try and justify it. No, you're a chick. Shut up. You were too dumb to become a doctor, and we're not buying that you're some compassionate cunt. Okay, so this is Fucked Up Friday, and this is from me man... The nurse. A couple of years ago, one of my best friends and I decided to go out to this bar where a band we wanted to see was playing. A older friend of his asked us if he can go, so we go to pick him up. I was designated driver. He says his brother wants to come too and will drive, so naturally I'm like, sure he can. I really wanted to get hammered and was glad I didn't have to drive now. So anyway, we go. The show is great. My buddy and I are shit-faced and walk out to the car. Our other friend and his brother are nowhere to be found, however. It was about midnight now. We decided to wait by the car, but after a while, nothing. So we go look around, but nothing either. (laughs) I just, I can't, I, I just, that whole paragraph, I'm just like, what was he thinking when he put that in? This next part. This is when I was like, does this even deserve to be a fucked up Friday story? So he goes, at about 1am, I call my mom. (laughs) 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 And ask her to come pick us up. You fucking wild man. I had some friends whose parents were like that, whose mum was like, if you're ever stuck anywhere no matter what time it is call me and I'll come pick you up one of my mate's mum said that in front of me once and I was like is this bitch insane you're just gonna come out at any time of the night to pick your stupid kid up I can't imagine if I tried that shit with my mum for starters she wouldn't answer the phone and secondly she would be more drunk than I am so anyway back to the story My best friend has since passed out on the curb next to the parking lot and I'm sitting next to his lifeless body. As we're waiting, he gets his second win and decides to check all the vehicles in the parking lot to see if they are manual transmission. In the US, unfortunately, they're mostly automatic. I guess what his plan was is he was going to break into it and just roll start the fucker. Mind you, I'm drunk as fuck still trying to redirect him. I get him to stop, but he tells me he wants to play tag now and starts to run the street. I chase him down and try and get him back to the parking lot. After a while, I finally get him back to the parking lot. About this time, our friend and his brother finally show back up 
Apparently, he was trying to talk to some fat chick at the bar. Who the hell knows? Hey, I didn't like that tone. Don't you ever speak ill of fat girls. They got me through a lot of hard times. God bless them. My buddy is still being a nut, so my stupid drunk self decides that I'm going to put him in a headlock and get him to pass out so he'll calm down. (laughs) As I go to do this, he bites my forearm like he's a zombie. This instantly pisses me off and I decide to headbutt him to knock him out. (laughs) This is clear thinking. As I go to do this, he looks up and I crack him in the nose instead of the forehead. Hold on, was your plan to headbutt him in the forehead and knock him out? Do you know how fucking hard you would have to headbutt someone in the forehead to concuss them? You're going to knock yourself out too. But I like it. I hear a crack and blood starts pouring out on the parking lot. I instantly feel terrible about what I've done and in my drunken stupidity, I try to stop the bleeding. I love how you think that trying to stop the bleeding is drunken stupidity. I get my arms and my shoes covered in blood. There's a pool of it on the ground now. It's starting to look like a murder scene. We managed to find some napkins and stuff and after some time the bleeding calms down. It's now about 2.30 in the morning. My mum pulls up and I load my drunken friend in who was sleepy again in the SUV and I get in the back seat with him. My mum is like, what the fuck happened to you two since we're now covered in each other's blood? I tell her, we're cool. Just drive. I'll explain it in the morning. As she pulls... As she pulls out of the parking lot, a cop pulls us over and asks what's going on. She says she's just picking up her son and his friend and are bringing them home. And thankfully, he lets her go. Apparently, some people from the bar across the street saw me and my friend running around, covered in blood and called the police. So that's the end of that story. And then a little bit later, he's like, can someone send in two stories? I'm like, yeah, fucking for sure, man. And then he sends, because I have another one where I tried to push my buddy out the window of a moving car, and then he made me pass out because he strangled me with the (laughs) seatbelt. I'm like, get that fucking story into me. Okay, thanks for your story. Keep sending in your stories. Add me on social media. Send them into that on Boyle Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you're enjoying the podcast, rate, review, subscribe to it, tell your friends about it, and I'll see you the fuck later.